All right, the last segment, we installed the motherboard in the case. And now, we're ready to actually plug the motherboard into the power supply. Now this one is an ATX power supply connector. There's a little nub at the top of that connector there that's going to be important. That's called the key. I'll show you how that fits in. This is the power supply connector. Now, this only goes in one way. As you can see from the bottom row here, some of these corners are rounded off a little bit and some of them are squared off. So that if I tried to plug it in backwards, uh, it just wouldn't go. So there's only one way to plug this connector in. So we'll just go ahead and plug that in. And it's pretty simple. Just line them all up. Make sure this little latch matches up with the key. Of course, it really won't go in any other way. Make sure the latch is secured. And now it won't come out either. All right. Now we're ready to turn it on. And uh, of course, we have to plug it in. And hit the power switch on the front. And we should get some beeps. Now this is the, actually the first step in troubleshooting the system. If we have any problems with the system, this is the first chance we get to find out what it is. Uh, we don't have any RAM installed. We don't have any cards installed. We don't even have the keyboard installed. So we expect to get some kind of beep. Now a lot of people just assemble everything all at once and then hope that it works at the end. But if it doesn't, then they won't know which part is, has gone wrong. So we're going to take it one step at a time, and this is the very first chance we have to do any troubleshooting. So we'll just go ahead and turn it on, push the button here, and we get our beep. So that tells me the beep is coming from the speaker, so I got the speaker plugged in correctly. The processor is making the beep happen, so the processor is processing. And uh, the fan is running, so the uh, fan is working, it's plugged in correctly. And the power supply is supplying power. Now we'll turn off that irritating beep. As a matter of fact, on these ATX systems, you actually have to hold the button in if it fails very early in the sequence. Uh, normally, you just push the button in and it goes right off. But in this case, it hasn't really had a chance to learn anything about the system yet, so it's still kind of dumb. And so we have to hold it in for up to 8 or 10 seconds to actually get it to turn off. So that's the first step of troubleshooting. Now, those repeating long beeps tells me if you look it up in the troubleshooting charts, uh, it tells me something's wrong with the system board. And in this case, it's no RAM. So we're going to add the RAM. I do have my wrist strap on. This is in extremely important when I'm handling the RAM because there's no obvious ground point to make sure I do have the wrist strap on. Now this is a called a DIM memory module, dual inline memory module. 168 pins. This is the kind we use with all of the newer Pentium systems and for that matter the uh, uh, the AMD K7 Athlons also, which is actually what we have here. Um, also there was a different way of installing the SIMs. If you're familiar with those, you would put them in and you would tilt them into position and because they were held in with a spring-loaded contact, they could come out if they were uh, uh, vibration or just moving it around. These actually go in, and we have these two little notches here that are going to hold it in place, and you'll see as I put it in how that works. So let's go ahead and put it in. Special slots for the memory. Get it in lined up straight. Push it straight in, just like a card, except different from the card is that these latches go into those notches so there is no way for them to come out. There is no way that these can actually vibrate out of there. So that's a very good design. Virtually all systems use that these days. All right, so uh, the first problem was we got the repeating beeps because there wasn't any RAM in it. Something was wrong with the system board. So we put the RAM in. And now we're going to turn it on again. And we should get something different this time. One long and two short. If you look that one up in the charts, you'd find out that either one long and two short or one long and three short beeps means that there's something wrong with the video. And of course there is. We don't have any. That's the problem. So we just verified that the basic system so far is operating as expected. We got the power supply working. We got the motherboard working. We got the speaker giving us feedback. The RAM is now 
working. We know that's working because it solved the RAM beep problem. And now we've gone on to the video. So that's what we'll be handling in the next segment. Plugging in the video and looking at the video error messages.